Welcome back to the Law School Toolbox podcast. Today we have ex-big law recruiter Sadie Jones here with us to talk about writing samples. Your Law School Toolbox host today is Allison Monahan, and typically I'm with Lee Burgess. We're here to demystify the law school and early legal career experience so that you'll be the best law student and lawyer you can be. Together with the co-creators of the Law School Toolbox, the Bar Exam Toolbox, and the career-related website Career Dicta. I also run the Girl's Guide to Law School. If you enjoy the show, please leave a review or rating on your favorite listening app. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can always reach us via the contact form on lawschooltoolbox.com, and we would love to hear from you. With that, let's get started. Welcome back to the Law School Toolbox podcast. Today, we're excited to have ex-big law recruiter Sadie Jones here with us to talk about writing samples. So welcome, Sadie. Thanks for having me back. My pleasure. Well, first off, when might people need a writing sample and really what is it exactly? So you might need it for a job, um, a clerkship, uh, an internship, kind of anything you're applying to as a law student or after law school, uh, you know, you might need it also. And it's really just a sample of legal writing that you've done. It's not just one exact thing. You know, it could be sort of a variety of things, but it's just, you know, an example of some writing that you could show them. Right. And you may need a different length for different things. So like clerkships, sometimes they ask for a longer writing sample. I would say with typically jobs, they're looking for something fairly short. Do you think that's accurate? Definitely. You know, I don't think there's an exact rule on it, but I would say, you know, try to keep it to five pages yeah. would kind of be my advice I was for, gonna say, for a job yeah. if you want someone to read it. <laughs> I agree. I was going to say four or five pages. And we'll talk later about you know how you get to that because probably you're writing longer things. But you know, this does not need to be like your opus magnum on some sort of legal theory. This is intended to be like quick, short, can you write, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and I guess what makes a good writing sample? Uh, you know, I think easy to read, polished, um, you know, something you're proud of, something you feel good about. Uh, you know, I think all of those things are sort of important. To be honest, uh, not everyone's going to read it. <laughs> so you sure. may be submitting it <laughs> for jobs where they will never look at it. But obviously, that's not how you go into it. You go into it assuming they're going to read it and they, you know, are going to think uh, that it's well done. Right. I think it's possible that someone in this process is probably going to at least look at this. And some people may look at it closely. So you cannot just assume it's sort of like a cover letter. Right. You can't just dial it in and like assume no one's ever going to read it because there are those people who I guarantee you before they allow you to be hired, we'll definitely go through your writing sample. Um, I think one of the key things here is you have to make sure it's absolutely clean. So, you know, if you need to fix your citations, if you need to make your formatting consistent, those are the type of things that are going to jump out at people um, more so than, you know, your exact logic or if you missed a case. Like they're not going to go look up case law to see if you were right, but they're definitely going to notice if you did not cite a case correctly. And I will say, I think that the expectation is that it will be perfect right. and that everybody's are perfect. And so it's the kind of situation where most likely it's not going to be the deal breaker, you know, for you getting called in or not, but it could be the thing that works against you. Right. So that's something to keep in mind, um, you know, in terms of what they're looking for. I would say they're looking for mistakes. Right. Nobody's going to read this and be like, wow, this was such an amazing analysis of this first year legal, legal writing prompt. We have to talk to this person. But they are going to say, wow, there are like three typos on the first page and they don't know how to cite cases. We are absolutely not talking to them. Because the thing about this is this is something that you're working on ahead of time and submitting it to them. You know, it's right. not something that they like timed you in a room and made you write <laughs> um, where, you know, there could be mistakes. But this is something that you've had, you know, considerable time and decided to submit. So it's sort of like, you know, anything you're, you're giving to them, your cover letter, your resume, it, you know, shouldn't have anything wrong with it because ideally you've had other people review it and you've looked at it many times and so you know there's no mistakes right i think this is kind of a test of like do you understand what this is for <laughs> and what it is for yes is basically the absolute best foot forward that you can possibly present and sometimes people say oh you know why should it matter if my citations aren't perfect 
that is the type of thing you will actually be doing in your legal job. And when you submit to a court, they expect these to be perfect. You can like that or not like that. But basically, anyone who's looking to hire you, they are looking for you to do this type of thing. So if you send them a writing sample that has bad citations, you're not going to be hired full stop. Absolutely. And I think this is a situation where law students can kind of get tripped up on what we were saying, like making it the perfect piece of writing and getting into the, you know, the legal theory and all of that. And that's not actually what they're looking for here. No. So you need to be focused on the details. Right. I mean, it basically needs to be clean, easy to read, you know, kind of flow, have appropriate headers, have appropriate transitions. Um, short, like we said, is generally better unless they've specifically requested a certain length. It's absolutely fine to cut out sections of a longer document. Um, we'll talk in a minute about where you can look for a writing sample, but you know, you may have written a paper that's 30 pages and you might want to only send five pages. That's totally fine. You know, you want to put it in context and kind of explain what's missing and you know, what this is, but you definitely can just cut out pieces. And I have seen many write examples that are upwards of 15 pages, and that is a big turnoff. Yeah, it just looks like you didn't try or you didn't understand what this was about. Yeah, and you don't want them to have to come back to you and say, you know, we need something shorter. I think yeah, that's you kind want- of, that's bad. Yeah, I think generally speaking, rule of thumb, I think four to five pages is about right. Um, Keep it pithy. You know, something that someone can flip through in a couple of minutes. That's kind of what we're looking for. Um, But yeah, I think like pithy too. You know, don't send something where you're just droning on and on. Because what they're really looking for is, you know, is this person who can write clearly, who can communicate well? And is this someone who's, you know, who if they wrote something, I would be able to use it. Definitely. Uh, And that you get the point, like you said, of what the assignment was, you know, what they're looking for from you. Um, And, you know, we know that if you're starting as a 1L, you might have no idea what this is. So this is why we're explaining it and why you should, (laughs) you know, maybe try to get examples of writing samples from other people so you can kind of get an idea of what, you know, what's being submitted, what's sort of expected of you. All right. Well, let's actually kind of switch topics to that. Um, Where can people kind of look to find a good writing sample? And obviously, this is going to vary if you are a 1L versus if you're later on in your law school career. What would be appropriate? So if you're a 1L, I mean, most likely you're getting this from um, legal research and writing class. Um, You you don't really have other options. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) most likely, I guess, you know, there there might be somebody who's who's written something else, um, some other piece of legal writing, but that's probably, you know, where you're getting it from. And it's hopefully it's something you've worked on and you, you know, have kind of ready to go from, you know, from that. Right. And if you feel like, you know, maybe you didn't do so well in legal writing, I think that's a situation where you need to evaluate, is there some piece of this that is okay that I can use? You might even go talk to your TA or your professor about this and say, look, you know, if I was going to use this as a writing sample, what do you think I should do? Um, And they may have suggestions about which pieces are stronger. Uh, You may have to do some editing. You know, that's all totally normal. You're allowed to edit this. It doesn't have to be the exact thing you've turned in. You want to make it better than that. Definitely. And if you're going into 1L year now, um, this is something to think about going into it, uh, that you're going to want to come out of it with a writing sample. Right. And so hopefully it's not a last minute situation, which I think a lot of students get themselves into. They haven't really thought about it and it's not ready and you are waiting for comments. You know, it's on you to go back and get it done. Right. And, you know, typically your most standard kind of legal writing is going to be your first semester. Um, So you have plenty of time, you know, to work on that. Um, You know, a lot of people, a lot of schools do moot court 1L, second semester. That can also be a great place to get your writing sample. Um, But you're not going to have a ton of options. That's just the reality. So hopefully. Right. You're going to get it from school. Right. Hopefully when you're a 2 or a 3L, you've got more options. What are some of those? So you could get them from your summer job that you had over your 1L summer. Any, you know, anything else that you did um, where you were writing. Uh, and, uh, you know, other writing courses, clinics, um, you know, I think you have usually more of a variety where you can pick, 
you know, something that you think is best. Right. I mean, so frankly, you know, your writing sample really ought to get better after your first year. And I think sometimes people don't think about that either. They just keep the same one that they had from their first semester. But I mean, hopefully you've become a better writer by the time that you're graduating 3L. So I think you do want to be thinking throughout your law school experience, again, like where, where do you need to update your writing sample, right? Definitely. And I think there's, you know, a chance to maybe show a few writing samples to, you know, somebody who can help you kind of pick, you know, maybe you've looked at them a lot. So you need like sort of an objective person to tell you, no, you should definitely go with this one. Right. And I think too, particularly when you're applying for things like clerkships, you want to be thinking about what message you might be sending with your writing sample um, for the topic. So For me, for example, I ended up submitting what some people would have probably thought was a fairly controversial topic at the time. Um, And I did think about, you know, is this kind of the best? I liked the paper. I thought it was really well done. It was an interesting legal question. Um, But I did think about, you know, what what message is this sending to certain judges? And then I decided, frankly, I probably don't want to work for anyone who has a problem with this. (laughs) Um, So... (laughs) Good point. <laughs> you know, so it was basically it was about same sex asylum cases. Um, and so, you know, some people might say, oh, well, you definitely shouldn't use that. But, you know, I was proud of the paper. I thought it was well done. And I also thought it was probably a pretty good filter. But I do think you want to think about the message you're sending and make sure you're okay with it. Definitely. And I think that could apply, you know, just at a law firm job also. Right. You know, they, and, you know, not necessarily that you'd get dinged for it, but, you know, you may be sending a message. So just make sure you're comfortable with what you're saying. Right. I think if you are applying, say that you're applying at a large firm and all of your resume before this kind of screams, I only want to do public interest work. Um, you do want to really, you know, if you have a writing sample that maybe is on a topic that's less related to that, that might be better than sending one that is more related to public interest, because at some point people are kind of questioning, like, do you really want to do this job or not? Definitely. And, you know, as we've talked about before, everything is part of your story and the story you're trying to tell. So you may not think of a writing sample, you know, as fitting in as well with that, but it does. Oh, for um, sure. So it's a chance to maybe balance things, like you said, you know, if everything else screams public interest. Right. But say you did, you know, a class or a clinic or something where you wrote a paper that was more corporate focused or whatever, then it sends a signal that like, oh, okay, this person is probably actually serious about this job. Um, All right. Well, let's talk a little bit more about getting writing samples from your work, because I think sometimes people don't think about some of the questions here. They just think like, oh, I worked on this thing and of course I can use it. But that's not really right, is it? It's definitely not right. (laughs) And I've seen a lot of people get into hot water in this situation. Uh, And it is something that, you know, maybe talked about in your orientation uh, or something like that, or your mentor talks to you or partner, um, but it may not be something that's emphasized. um, So it's possible you sort of miss what the rules are. But I would just always go back to you need to get clearance to use anything um, even if it's something that you wrote, it's not yours. Um, right. You, you do not own yeah. this intellectual property. Exactly. And I think <laughs> some law students do get confused about that. Um, so that's, you know, one thing to consider is that you need to get permission and make sure you're getting permission from the right person. Right. Um, and I would say probably get that permission in writing. Absolutely. Um, so it's, you know, it's great to send an email, um, just, you know, confirming. And it might be something that's like a follow up from you've already had a conversation, right. you know, that they said, like, sure. Um, and then you always want to make sure that you've okayed the final version that you're going to submit with them. So if there was stuff that you needed to redact, um, you know, or whatever it was, you want to make sure that they have approved that this is like fine for, you know, the public. Right. Because the issue here is you don't want to be sending out client confidential information. You don't want anything that's remotely identifiable. Um, You know, these are client documents. So you've got to think of client confidentiality and all these things. And obviously, your employer does not want some piece of work product that is like very easily identifiable as a certain client to be out being submitted to other places like that's not it's just not a good look for anyone. So, you know, you may have multiple things that you've done over the summer. So think about that when you're even deciding like where to start to choose. You know, there may be something that's kind of easier to adapt. Yeah, for sure. If it's more sort of focused on a legal issue or something like that, I think that's probably better than something that's very, very highly fact specific. 
Um, I think this also we you've got to keep in mind this really needs to basically be your own work and not something that's really heavily edited by someone else. And I think in that case, maybe you can go back to an earlier draft and work on that or something. But, you know, if you wrote, say, like a first draft of something and then it went through three or four other lawyers and it looks nothing like what you submitted and then it gets submitted to a court and you want to use that as your writing sample, that is probably not appropriate. Yeah, I think this is a situation where you can kind of tell if it's crossed the line. Right. Um, And so if you're asking, you know, then it probably isn't okay. Right. (laughs) Like you probably know if it's really your work. Um, And that doesn't mean that somebody didn't sort of help you edit it, you know, or do like a final read through, polish it, that kind of thing. But like the actual work should be yours. Right. And I think ideally, too, you want this to show some level of analysis um, and not just be something, you know, people sometimes think, well, the only thing I worked on were discovery responses. That's probably not really appropriate to use as a writing sample. I mean, unless you were digging into some issue on those. But, you know, you're not just looking for like, well, here's what I did at work. Like you want this to show your legal thinking and your skills. Yeah, because I think some of that is sort of just laziness. Like, I don't really want <laughs> to like dig deeper, or find something else or, you or know, just whatever. It. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like, you need to really think about this and think about, you know, what it's, you know, what message is sending, what it's showing about what you're able to do, um, that kind of thing. Right. Um, and I mean, do you think employers expect people or think it's okay if someone's gotten help to make their writing sample better? I think that employers absolutely expect that somebody else has read it. Um, So, you know, I think that's kind of expected. But like we said, you know, it should be your work. But that's one of the reasons that I sort of think that any mistake or any like big issue with it is sort of looked at even worse because they assume that other people have helped you with it to some degree. Yeah, I think you should think of this more as your resume and cover letter type style document than you think of it as an exam or something you're submitting for legal writing. Um, You know, this should be as polished as you can make it while still being your own work. Um, And I think it's usually pretty obvious if somebody has, you know, totally changed everything for you. Um, But, you know, in terms of like making sure your citations are all correct and those kind of things, your formatting is consistent. Like you definitely want other eyes on this. Yeah, and that's completely the expectation. Um, And, you know, there are certain people who really put a lot of stock in writing samples and, like, insist on reading all the writing samples for all the students. Um, And then there are other people who would never even dream of looking at it, and you sort of never know who you're going to get. Right. (laughs) So you have to assume that you're going to get somebody who cares about this. Right. And also, this is a topic that can come up in your interview as well. Um, I've definitely spoken with people about their writing samples. I've had people ask me about my writing sample. Um, So you're also kind of setting the stage for something you might end up talking about in an interview. I mean, that's probably more likely if it's a paper topic than if it's just your 1L like drafting of like memo to the court about whatever. Um, There are people who are probably not likely to talk to you about it, but they might. I mean, you know, if you're casting around looking for things to talk to someone about, your writing sample is always a good way to kill a few minutes. Definitely. I mean, they are just looking sometimes for things to say. Right. And if it is something interesting, you know, it may be something that they actually, you know, want to talk to you about. Right. And I think that's true if you're applying for a very, you know, this is probably more later years, but if you're applying for a certain type of job, it's great if your writing sample can relate to that because then it is a topic you can talk about. And oh, one other, I mean, it could also be your note, I guess, that you've written. Mm-hmm. Um, although then again, you get into a lot of editing issues. I mean, obviously your first draft polished up would be fine but then if it's gone through like multiple rounds of revision the law review or wherever it's being published probably that's not necessarily the greatest option but also at that point it probably doesn't really matter because you can just be like here's my published note and they're like great (laughs) (laughs) i could have just seen that yeah yeah i mean you can include it i mean there what i'd probably do is include a piece of it and then link to like where it's published if they want to read the whole thing but that would be a great thing to talk about actually in an interview Definitely. I also know that some students sort of have a shorter and a longer writing sample prepared, depending on, you know, what it's for. And so, you know, that might be an idea that's, you know, definitely for, you know, if you're a 2L, 3L, you probably have, you know, more things you're going to use it for, you're applying for, and then you have more, you know, to choose from. Um, But that might be a good idea just to have that in your back pocket if that's a possibility. 
Yeah, I think. And I mean, it's not out of the question that someone could come back and ask for a longer version. So you don't, you do want to make sure you have something basically you could put together in a day or so to send to them. Yes, definitely. All right. Well, what if people are like, you know, I, this is all great. I wish I had a note. I haven't done that. I'm only a 1L. Like, I don't really know what to do. What if people just can't come up with anything? I mean, can, can I choose an exam answer if I got an A on it? Is that okay? I mean, I think you could write something. <laughs> I think that could be okay. <laughs> I mean, I would generally not recommend this course of action. Um, but If you had to. <laughs> yeah, if you really, I mean, say you absolutely bombed legal writing and you think that is not something that you can renovate and get going. I mean, you may end up in this situation where you're just like, all right, well, you know, this was an exam answer. I got an A on it. Maybe I can do something with this. I mean, it would definitely be unconventional. I think it would raise some eyebrows, um, but, you know, it's not out of the question. It's better than having nothing. Right. I mean, you have to have something. Um, sometimes people wonder, too, like, well, can I just write something from scratch? I mean, you could. I'm not sure that I, would make much sense. <laughs> yeah. I, I, and I, I think you could if you were really out of, you know, any other options. With any of these sort of, like, um, unconventional situations, though, you're probably going to have to explain it. Right. <laughs> so yeah. you're going to need a story about how you ended up just using an exam answer, or writing something <laughs> from scratch, or why you couldn't use, you know, what you wrote um, in legal writing. So I think that's something you're just going to have to think about. Right. I mean, if I was going to write something totally from scratch, I think the way that I would frame it, whether this was completely true or not, is that it was a like pre pre submission draft of something I was planning on submitting mm -hmm. to a law review, and something you were interested in, right, <laughs> or something I mean, you, you know. know, like it could you could actually be something that you're planning to possibly submit, say to like a specialty journal later on or something like that. Like I think that is completely believable. I mean, it's a lot of work. I'm not sure I'd recommend it. I mean, unless you actually want to do it. Um, but yeah, you're right. You're going to have to tell some believable story about why you can't just use, you know, your first year. I mean, maybe your grade tells that story. But <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I mean, I guess you could have a story about how, you know, yeah, if your grades are particularly, you know, not great. Um, you could talk about how, you know, you sort of improved and you've been working on your writing or, you know, something like that. Like maybe it would, that would be the narrative. Right. But I mean, I think ideally, if you have any possibility of doing it, you probably just want to use your 1L like legal writing work. Yeah. And even if you need to, you know, fix it, I right. think that's probably better than the alternative. I agree. I feel like pick the one piece of that, you know, say 20 page paper, or whatever you submitted that doesn't seem that terrible and then clean it up. And then hopefully it's perfectly sufficient. Um it doesn't have to be, you know, the best thing ever. It just has to be in the realm of this is not going to raise eyebrows and make people start asking questions. Yeah. And I think that's the, the biggest thing to keep in mind. I think sometimes people put too much pressure on themselves about what this needs to be. Um, and so it needs to not have mistakes. <laughs> it right. needs to be coherent. <laughs> yeah. um, but it doesn't need to be, you know, amazing. Yeah, I mean, particularly if you're applying for jobs, as, you know, just after 1L or during 1L, nobody expects you to have this amazing legal work. They just expect you to have like a basic competence level. And that's really what they're looking for. And I think I hopefully for almost everyone, your 1L work in legal writing or moot court or whatever it is, second semester can be that paper. <laughs> Yeah, or it can become that paper. Right, exactly. <laughs> it wasn't. Yes, it can be shaped into something that is perfectly acceptable. And then you can... And you can ask for help. Yeah, you and know, you should. In terms of what you need to do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, you, if your legal writing experience was not great, you should definitely ask for help, um, whether that help is from your school, from your teacher, from someone outside. I mean, we sometimes look at people's writing samples for them and help them out with it. We sometimes help them pick, you know, if they're applying for clerkships and they're not really sure, like, what would be better, what which of these is stronger. Like, you know, someone needs to be that outside eye for you, but there are lots of options. And a disclaimer here, because um, I have heard students say this before. Um, so for whatever reason, you really feel like you can't use it and the class did not go well and whatever it is. Your your story or your narrative can't be that like it was the professor's fault, oh, right? <laughs> um, and they were terrible because I have heard a lot of students say that, and I'm not saying that they weren't terrible, but you cannot tell an employer that. 
No, no, you need to take responsibility. I mean, somebody in that class did okay, and it wasn't you. So (laughs) exactly. Um, So whatever happened, that's, that's not what you can convey. You need to, you need to, yeah, own it and have some other reason. Right. I mean, if somebody asks you, well, why didn't you use your first semester legal writing work? And you say, well, because I hated my professor, and I thought they did a terrible Mm -hmm. job. That is not what we want to hear. Yeah. So let's, let's stay positive. Right. Just say, oh, well, you know, I thought this other thing was a better representation Mm -hmm. of the quality of my work. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Fine. Whatever. (laughs) We don't really, again, like no one really cares. You just can't say things that are going to raise eyebrows. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, we're about out of time on this one. Any final thoughts? Uh, you know, I think people should remember they need a writing sample prepared, whether or not they've been asked directly to submit one for a particular job, um, because you never know when you're going to need it. Uh, so I would always, you know, have one, you know, for any jobs that you're going to, you know, be applying for at any point in law school. Um, so after each year, you should have, you know, a really solid writing sample, Um, it's not something that like you should wait to see if someone might ask for, um, you know, I think, yeah, that's just be prepared. Um, you know, and it don't overthink it, you know, it doesn't have to be a big deal, but it becomes a big deal if it's like the night before and you need something. No, I think that's a great point. And I think it is something you want to be thinking about over time, you know, even at the end of each semester, kind of evaluate like, okay, you know, is there something I did? Is there work I did this semester that I was really happy with that maybe would be a better writing sample than what I have? And if what you have is still your first semester legal writing memo, the answer to that question is probably yes. And so you should spend yeah. some time doing a better upgraded version that, you know, is again, not going to disappoint people when they look at it. Definitely. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Unfortunately, with that, we are out of time. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. For more career help and the opportunity to work one-on-one with us, including on your writing sample, check out careerdicta.com. If you enjoyed this episode of the Law School Toolbox podcast, please take a second to leave a review and rating on your favorite listening app. We would really appreciate it. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to reach out to Lee or Allison at lee at lawschooltoolbox.com or allison at lawschooltoolbox.com, or you can always contact us via our website contact form at lawschooltoolbox.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk soon.